I'm just gonna pretend like I haven't skipped out on doing a Q&A video in about four months. These were beautiful. Future. Whatever. My regular Niffler. Hello beautiful people, how's it going? I'm back with another video and today we're going to be doing a magical Harry Potter and Fantastic Beast Q&A because I haven't done one in literally four months. I know it's hard to believe but it really has been that long because obviously Fantastic Beasts came out and all the theory videos started unraveling and there are still so many to talk about but I wanted to take some time off and talk to you guys and so last week I asked all of you to leave questions in the Bunty <laughs> Last week I asked all of you to leave questions in the Bunty is a Weasley video and you guys all did or at least like a hundred of you did and obviously unfortunately I can't answer all hundred questions but I can try to just really quickly go through a lot of them to make you guys happy and this is it. <laughs> what is your favorite wizarding school? I'm assuming you mean between Hogwarts and Ilvermorny. Of course I'd say Hogwarts. Do you prefer Grindelwald or Voldemort? This is a very interesting question because Grindelwald is a very, very, very manipulative villain whereas Voldemort uses fear. Because I'm really, really, really invested in the Fantastic Beasts series and my channel has sort of become a Fantastic Beasts channel more so than a Harry Potter one because obviously I'm just doing it now as opposed to seven or eight or nine or ten years before and so my love for Fantastic Beasts is sometimes I feel outgrowing my love for Harry Potter. So I guess you could say Grindelwald just for that reason? <laughs> Favorite character from the Fantastic Beasts franchise and why? Can you relate to this character in real life? Um, my favorite character in the Fantastic Beasts franchise is someone who's really unlike me, and that's Lita Lestrange. She's a very quiet, very brooding, and very sad character, um, who I just feel was developed very well. As opposed to what a lot of people say in Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald, um, she has become not only one of my favorite characters in Fantastic Beasts, but in the entire Harry Potter universe, um, also because Zoe Kravitz is an amazing actress and so just her work in general is something I just appreciate very much and her persona in real life is also something I admire. And then on top of all of that, Lita Lestrange is a heartbreaking character with a heartbreaking storyline which you really root for, or at least um, I rooted for her. And her backstory was my favorite part of The Crimes of Grindelwald and so... Yes, she is my favorite character from the Fantastic Beasts franchise. Are you on Pottermore and is that where you knew you were a Slytherin? Well, it's kind of a sticky situation. I did the Pottermore quiz and I came out as a Slytherin and I kind of tried to hide it and just deny it for a couple of years until I actually realized that yes, I do carry a lot of the personality traits that a Slytherin carries and once I accepted that, I became a much happier person and my room is now decorated in green styling i mean i mean there's not much here because it's more inclusive of all houses but like over there there's a lot of green over there a lot of green on my pin board green on my bed sheets <laughs> but yes if you didn't know i'm a slytherin and uh yeah i am on pottermore if you were able to perform one spell what would it be the patronus charm i feel is something that i need a lot in my life at the moment uh i really want to find that source of happiness and to just stick to it i mean i'm a very happy person but it's just sometimes I feel like I really could, I really could use like a honing in on something that makes me very happy and be able to utilize it in my real life. In fact, it's something that I just kind of wish I remembered more. And maybe a reason why I need to rewatch the Harry Potter films or read the books again. Why do you think Leto was engaged to Theseus in Crimes of Grindelwald when she clearly still has feelings for Newt? Well, <laughs> before I used to, before I watched the movie, I thought that Leto was with Theseus to get back at Newt, but then I realized that that has nothing to do with her character and that's not the case at all. I genuinely think that Leda feels as if she's in love with Theseus and maybe the way she loved Newt was in a different way. I mean, at the end of the day, like, like just take me for example, there are a lot of people which I love but have very, very, very different feelings of love towards and and it's just it's just it's just very different and so i think um lita loves theseus and newt in two completely different ways i mean if she was alive i really feel like she still would marry theseus she she just would uh and so that kind of changes my perspectives on a lot where are you from you look egyptian uh thank you <laughs> i'm from the united arab emirates and if you guys don't know where that is it's dubai just yeah. What got you into Harry Potter, the books or the films? I'm thinking of my own videos. Uh, well, I got into Harry Potter by watching The Philosopher's Stone on a TV channel when I was like five. I was like really scared and my dad was all like, nah, 
you have to do this because fear isn't a good thing. And so he just made me watch Philosopher's Stone and that just became his biggest nightmare, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 no. He really supports all of this. He's actually my stage manager, if you guys didn't know. Shout out to you, Baba. My question is, do you think JK will make Harry Potter and the Cursed Child into a movie if for nothing other than to correct things? No. 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 I just really hope she doesn't. I mean, I really hope she doesn't because the Cursed Child is just something that I disagree with. In terms of her personally, I don't think she would make Cursed Child into a film primarily because she made it for the stage. In fact, a lot of the stage directions, a lot of the practicality of the play only works as a stage performance. Um, and I think you'd kind of get the grip of that if you read the screenplay. It's ju it just wouldn't fit um, a novel, which I guess is something that also Fantastic Beast struggles with because it's written like a book, even though it's a screenplay, so it just complicates things. And so I really don't think that Joe would want to take that direction just in case it could turn out very badly. And I'm pretty sure she'd be advised against it. Apart from, you know, Warner Brothers who would want her to do it for the box office, but then again, what's your Ilvermorny house? I'm a Thunderbird, but I would like to point out I spent no time on that Pottermore quiz. I mean, I just did it really quickly to find out because I'm just not invested in Ilvermorny. I just didn't feel like they did a good job of introducing us to that in Fantastic Beasts. I mean, we haven't even been to Ilvermorny yet. Who is your favorite character from each house? <sighs> wow. Um, Ravenclaw would be Luna. Gryffindor would be Hermione. Uh, Hufflepuff would be Newt Scamander and Slytherin uh, would be Severus Snape. I love Snape. I love Snape so much. <laughs> so I guess that, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Is English your native language because you speak it so good? Thank you. Uh, no, Arabic is my native language. Any thoughts of what you want to do in the future? I want to study media. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a surprise to any of you guys. I mean, I'm on the internet, <laughs> but yeah, uh, media has always been a thing that I've been connected to. I've been making videos ever since I was a child. I mean, some of my YouTube videos from when I was like nine and 10 are still on YouTube. I don't know if you can find them, but uh, let's, ju let's just say the, the, the theme of the videos is very similar. So maybe if you search my name and you search a very, very popular book series, in the same search bar, you might find something that I don't really want you to find. <laughs> Favorite Wizarding World character? Maybe Snape? Maybe Lita Lestrange? I'm just leaving it out there. What is better, Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts? Now here's the question. <laughs> the thing with Harry Potter is it holds such a dear place in my heart because again, it is what created all of this. It, it is what made my love for magic what it is. It's what it's, it's a part of who I am growing up, and so I will always have that connection to Harry Potter. However, Fantastic Beasts is something that I'm just much more physically invested in. I mean, because I spent so much time making videos on it, and theories, and, and you know, my channel. So, the answer is I really can't choose. Because, whereas I do love Harry Potter, and it will always be in my heart, Fantastic Beasts at the moment is something I'm more invested in. But then again, I really do need to rewatch the movies, but I, I kind of want to do this thing where I rewatch them on video. I just thought that would be a fun idea. Would you rather be Harry Potter or Dumbledore for a day? Easy question. I can't deal with stress. I just really can't. So Harry Potter is a very, very anxious person because he has to go through a lot. So I just be Dumbledore because he's Dumbledore and he's all knowing. If you could work anywhere in the wizarding world, where would you work? Uh, I'd be a Hogwarts professor. I love the idea of being a teacher. Hello? Hi, I'm good. I'm in my room filming a video, why? Uh, okay. Well, I'm currently doing my Q&A, so bye. So yeah, if you could work anywhere in the wizarding world, where would you work? <laughs> I'd be a Hogwarts professor because I just really like teaching. I like the idea of, you know, um, just like enlightening kids and, and making our futures brighter by teaching people things. Uh, I like that. And I also really love Hogwarts, so I just, I just enjoy teaching there. Which death in the series is the most heartbreaking for you? I really, I mean, it really depends on if you're talking about the films or the books. For the books, I would say Sirius. Sirius's death was very gut-wrenching, and I feel like in the movie, whereas it was excellent, it was executed well, I just felt like it was really rushed and happened very quickly. For the movies, it's Dumbledore's death a million percent by far because it was stretched out. I think the whole sequence lasted eight minutes and because of that it was just very powerful and it's something that I just really 
just really, really emotionally like clicked with me. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I saw Half Blood Prince in the theaters before I read it uh, because I was catching up, and it was it was around it was like a couple of years before when it was around the time when I started getting onto Harry Potter. But again, my English wasn't always like the very best, and so I had to read it like slowly and piece by piece. So I witnessed Dumbledore's death. Uh, in, in the cinema and I didn't even know what was gonna happen. So it was something that uh, really got to me and I was, a, I was a bit of an emotional kid, uh, which I'm pretty sure surprises none of you. Uh, and yeah, so Dumbledore is in the films, Sirius in the books. Who do you think will die in the future Fantastic Beast movies? Jacob's gonna die, you guys, and I don't understand how none of, none of you have like made this connection yet. He is literally a nomad. There is no way he's going to survive a second Wizarding World war. And, and, and Grindelwald is going to take him out, like, one, one way or the other. In fact, maybe that's the way Queenie's going to get the medicine that she needs to be fed because of what she did in The Crimes of Grindelwald. If you weren't in Slytherin, which house would you be in? I'd be in Ravenclaw. Uh, I, th I think. I mean, I'd like to be in Ravenclaw. I'd like to be referred to as smart. I, I, I like to think of myself as a smart person. Uh, I'm also brave, so I guess I could do... Gryffindor. I wouldn't see myself as a Hufflepuff though. I'm not really good at finding things. And also Hufflepuffs are very warm hearted. And even though I am, I feel like I'm a very warm hearted person. And I hope you guys think of me as a warm hearted person, but I just, mm. <laughs> do you like Ginny Weasley in the movies? What do you think the movies did wrong or right with Ginny and her relationship with Harry? Now this is a very convoluted question because I understand Ginny was very short changed in the films. And this is like, what I'm about to say is really going to like stick the landing with why she was shortchanged. The reason I like Ginny in the books is because she was a very interesting and very developed character. And the reason I like Ginny in the movies, and I'm really sorry for saying this, is just because she's very, very hot. Like Ginny Weasley is just, <laughs> wouch. You just really understand the, the kind of like messed upness of how they portrayed her in the films. And it wasn't Bonnie Wright's fault. Uh, it is Bonnie Wright's fault for being that good looking, but not her fault for the script that she was given. And I partially put that onto David Yates for making her such a secondary character in the films when she should have been primary. How old were you when you first read Harry Potter? Read? I was like eight. Saw? I was five. What are your top five favorite Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts ships? My main ship in the entire Wizarding World is Newt and Tina because their love is so pure and it's developed so well. Guys, we are two films into Fantastic Beasts and they haven't even kissed yet. That just goes to show you how like intricate their relationship is. And I, I like that because in mainstream media, you are just forced with all of this like sexualization, which is not something that I'm not guilty of. It is but um, it's refreshing to see a very pure relationship and it's refreshing to see two people who can't communicate attempt to communicate with each other and it's genuinely so nice to see. And so they are my number one. What's your favorite theory about Credence and why? My favorite theory about Credence is the fact that he is a piece of Ariana Dumbledore's Obscurus that just blew up and that Ariana Dumbledore was an Obscurus and after she died, like her offspring just like exploded and formed Credence. Uh, so it's kind of like he's her daughter, but not really because obviously not the natural way. I really like that. Um, I also really like the idea that he could be Dumbledore's dark twin, again with an Obscurus thing, um, just Obscurus in general and relating to the Dumbledore family. Perfect, and I really want that to happen. And it most likely will, and so I'm excited. Last question, who is your favorite unlovable character or a character you love to hate? Well, uh, I'm a big fan of Snape, even though a lot of people are not a fan of Snape, and uh, I just feel like he's a character that gets shortchanged um, a lot, and misunderstood a lot, and he did a lot of bad things, and he was a horrible person to Harry, but um, and he was actually really abusive, but um, he's just a character that ever since I was a kid I had a soft spot for, and so even though I, I've grown up and I've realized that some of his actions are very unforgivable and just unjustifiable, um, they are like, my heart is too invested in him, and so Snape is my favorite lovable, unlovable character. So thank you guys so much for watching my latest Q&A. I really hope you guys enjoyed this, and remember, I'm gonna be wanting to do, I'm going to be wanting to do these a lot more often. Um, so leave me questions whenever you feel like it, and I'll just leave them, like, on a tag post, or just put them in my notes for whenever you guys 
feel like I need to do another Q&A. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and a comment down below and subscribe to my channel to see a lot more Harry Potter content. Bye guys! I love this. Yeah. <laughs>